very sincere gratitude to all of the assembled devotees for taking the trouble to come. to this holy pilgrimage of Sri Jagannath Puri Dham. During this yatra, we try to follow particular rules. We should not speak of anything that does not induce devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in our own minds and in the minds of others. And we should about avoid hearing such things. We do not go on pilgrimage like an ordinary person takes a holiday. For us, it is a holy day. We come specifically for our purification. Every moment, is an opportunity in the Holy Dham, in the association of devotees, to go very deep into our ultimate aspiration of pure devotional service. By the mercy of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, we have assembled here for that purpose alone. And I am so grateful that several of my worshipable God brothers and God sisters are here with us. To my left we have His Holiness in Jujumana Swami Maharaj. If I were to speak even a drop of the ocean of their glories, we would have no time to speak anything else. But what can we say about in Jujumana Swami Maharaj? One of the most lovable personalities in the 14 worlds and beyond. An absolutely fearless preacher of the holy names. Wherever he goes, his attraction to Krishna attract everyone's hearts. His diaries are an inspiration and solace to thousands of people throughout the world. His amazing tours and festival in Poland are festivals that this world and our movement have never seen. His beautiful kirtans, devotion classes, and his incredible personality have really captured the hearts of everyone who has come in contact with him. I literally begged and pleaded for him to be on this yatra with us. And he's come all the way from California just to be with us for about three days and then has to be in Poland. Let us show our gratitude and welcome with in immense enthusiasm His Holiness Intrajumana Swami Much louder, please. To my right, we have this superbly lovable personality. 
His Holiness Sachinandan Swami Maharaj. It wasn't time yet, but thank you for your spontaneous enthusiasm. Maharaj, wherever he goes, he literally melts devotees' hearts. His childlike, innocent enthusiasm just spontaneously springs from his heart and drowns us with an enthusiasm for devotional service. His incredible analytical explanations of the essential elements of bhakti, his wonderful dancing, his kirtan, and his very kind friendship have really conquered our hearts. We are so happy that he has come. He also came long distance just to be here for this yatra. Let us welcome with tumultuous enthusiasm His Holiness Sachinandan Swami Maharaj. His Holiness Devamrita Swami Maharaj is also with us. We will welcome him another time because he is reserving energies for Ratayatra tomorrow. So he is not attending this evening. He had a very serious automobile accident some months ago. And it's really amazing that he's come this far for this Yatra. He's back at the Birla guest house near the ocean. And let us express our gratitude in such a way that he can hear it at this moment. And we also have His Holiness Chandramali Swami Maharaj. If he's here, he's in such a humble position nobody knows. Is he here? So we will welcome him later. Another wonderful godbrother and a dear and old friend of mine, His Grace Dharmatma Prabhu has joined us. Can you stand up, Dharmatma Prabhu? Please? They cannot see. Please, if you stand up, you'll save so much time. Oh, you're standing? Oh, oh he's, he's standing, but he's on a lower step. Let us welcome our dear friend, Dharmatma Prabhu. Of the famous Sri Prahlad Prabhu, who will be leading us in Kirtan tomorrow. Anyone else? Ah, Navina Nirada Prabhu. Where is he? Navina Nirada Prabhu, can you stand up? There on the, on the roof. Acha, on the roof. He's waving. <laughs> a rare appearance. It's our great joy to welcome Navina Nir Prabhu. Years of wonderful service to Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya's mission. Let us welcome him. and to everyone else. When Srila Prabhupada 
was a small boy in the back lanes of Calcutta. He would organize an annual Rathayatra festival for the friends and neighbors in his neighborhood. With great enthusiasm, his mother would get him a little wagon. He would decorate it very nicely with great devotion and put the deities of Baladev, Subhadra Mai, and Jagannath Swami and pull the chariot with kirtan through the lanes and alleys of Calcutta and distribute prasad. And Srila Prabhupada explained when he was a little older, he would oftentimes get the schedule of the trains leaving from the Hora station and see what time the trains would be going to Jagannath Puri and regularly dream about coming to this holy place. After Srila Prabhupada established the Hare Krishna movement, he established Ratha Yatra first in San Francisco and renamed San Francisco, California, New Jagannath Puri. And from there, he organized and inspired Ratha Yatras in practically every major city of the world and installed the deities of Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra By his inspiration, there are thousands and thousands of such deities in people's homes and temples on all continents of earth. Without Srila Prabhupada, hardly anyone outside of Orissa and Bengal would have ever even known about Jagannath Balaram and Subhadra. So I believe that Srila Prabhupada is very blissfully smiling upon all of you who have come from all parts of the world to celebrate Jagannath's Ratha Yatra here in Sri Puri Dham. <coughs> Jagannath Puri is spoke about profusely in the Vedic literatures. The Brahma Purana, Agni Purana, Matsya Purana, Narada Purana, and most elaborately in the Purushottam Kshetra Mahatmya of the Skanda Purana. I would like to briefly summarize some of the history that is told by Srila Vyasadeva in this regard. It begins with an assembly of sages who were in a forest discussing spiritual subjects. The leading sage was Jaimini Rishi. He was illuminating the hearts of all of the assembly, especially when he told about a very holy place on earth within the middle planetary systems, which is the eternal residence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, it is called Purushottam Kshetra. The sages were very curious to know more about this place. So he explained. Arunadakshai Vishnu, simply by his will, 
created the entire cosmic manifestation. By his exhalation, all universes manifested from his pores. The Lord, simply by his will, impregnated material existence, or the Mahatattva, with the 24 material elements, which are all presided over by the three modes of material nature, Sattva-guna, Rajaguna, and Tamaguna. However, the creation was in an utterly stagnant condition until Mahavishnu glanced within it. With that glance, he impregnated material nature with his own power of time. The time activated the three modes of material nature, and through this process, creation began. He also impregnated the womb of Mother Nature with all living entities whose karmic situation was to be here. The secondary, or Visharaka, creation was left to Lord Brahma. The Lord gave all facilities, knowledge, and abilities to Lord Brahma who created the residences, all the living entities, to live within. But as Brahma was creating, he became very depressed. Why? Due to compassion. Because as the creator, secondary, of this creation, he knew how it worked and why. Krishna tells this material existence is a place of misery. Brahma prayed to Lord Vishnu. He prayed. And Lord Vishnu came, descended on a beautiful swan carrier and manifested himself before Brahma. Brahma told my Lord, I have created a situation where everyone suffers. Why are they suffering? Bodily they're suffering due to thirst, hunger, too much cold, too much heat. People are suffering due to diseases of all varieties due to birth, old age, disease, and death. And mentally people suffer from anxiety, depression. People suffer due to the urges for sex life. They suffer due to envy. They suffer due to pride. They suffer due to anger. I am feeling very compassionate for all living beings. Is there a place where they can be delivered? Please tell me. And the Lord replied, There is a place. It is my abode within this world. And because I reside in that place, it is known as Purushottam Kshetra. You will find it north of the sea and south of the Mahanadi River. It spans 80 square miles. And the heart of Purushottam Kshetra is a bluish mountain which is called Nilachala. On that mountain I appear as Nilamadava, a magnificent sapphire blue stone deity, along with my consort Lakshmi. And anyone who goes to that holy place and sees that deity will certainly be delivered from all sufferings. 
Lord Brahma was very enthusiastic. He immediately left his own abode, came down to this earth planet, and searched through the jungles of Orissa and came to Purushottam Chetra. When he came upon the Nilachala, he saw a gigantic Kalpabriksha tree. Just under the Kalpabriksha tree, it was Rohini Kund. There he saw a great miracle. There was an ordinary, insignificant crow that happened to be flying in the sky. And he dipped down and touched the waters of Rohini Kund. Immediately, that crow was transformed into a four-armed associate of the Lord and ascended to Vaikuntaloka. Brahma then offered prayers and love to the deity of Nila Madhava. Yamaraj, the son of the sun god, happened to see what took place. He immediately came down. And along with Lord Brahma, standing before Nila Madhava and Lakshmi Devi, Yamaraj asked a question. He said, you have given me the duty to punish people for their sins. How will I perform my duty if even a sinful crow, just by touching this water, goes back to Godhead? This is quite an obstacle in my service. Lakshmi Devi, she replied, that Brahma, Yama, please listen very carefully. In this Purushottam Kshetra, it is such a holy place that whoever resides here and sees my form will be purified of all sins. This is the abode of the Lord. Neither Brahma or Yamaraj or any of the demigods have any authority in this place. In fact, even at the time of the dissolution of the universe, at the end of the day of Brahma, this is the one place that remains as it is. In this regard, Vrindavan Das Thakur and Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat quotes from Skanda Purana. Herein, it is told by Lakshmi Devi and Nila Madhava that when the demigods look down at Purushottam Kshetra, they see all the animals, beasts, birds, and insects have forearm Vishnu forms as associates of the Lord. In fact, it is said in Skanda Purana that this place is so holy, anyone who goes to sleep here gets the same credit as entering into full yogic samadhi. Anyone who walks here, one step, gets the credit of circumambulating the holy places of pilgrimage. Anyone who speaks here is as good as someone speak, chanting the Vedic hymns. And it even goes to the extent of saying, even if someone eats fish here, gets the credit of eating havishya, the sacred offerings to the Lord. But please, <laughs> Sri 
Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas told us not to do that. <laughs> so following the order of the Acharyas takes precedent over this uh, benediction. <laughs> it is a most holy place. Lakshmi told Brahma and Yamaraj a story about Markandeya Rishi. He had the darshan of Nara Narayan in Badrikashram and was given the benediction to live a long life. Now, what is a long life for you? 80 years? Maybe 90? If you live to a hundred, if you're in the UK, you get a special letter from the Queen of England. If you live to a hundred in America, <clears throat> you get a three-second picture of yourself on television stations. But Markandeya Rishi was given the benediction to live for seven kalpas. Now, what is a kalpa? A kalpa is an entire uh, yuga cycle of Satya Yuga, which is 1,728,000 years. Treta Yuga, which is 1,296,000 years. Dwapa Yuga, which is 864,000 years, and Kali Yuga, which is 432,000 years. The entire cycle of the Yugas is one day of Brahma. Brahma lives 311 trillion, not 40 million years. And then the night of Brahma is the same amount of time in utter darkness and dissolution. Seven such kalpas. So it was quite pleasant, because Markandeya Rishi was a very highly realized person in yogic samadhi. Daytime was very nice, but when night came, it was torment, absolute devastation. The whole universal creation up till Swarga Loka was flooded by the ocean of dissolution. Massive waves. When we go to bathe in the sea here, you will be crushed by some waves. But what are these waves? These are nice, pleasant waves to purify our bodies. But the waves in the ocean of dissolution Practically every wave is a tsunami. And it was freezing cold. And he has to be there all night for millions of years. In the water. It, it is, to say the least, a sleepless night. <laughs> it was freezing. He was being bashed and smashed by the waves. He had nowhere to rest. There was nothing to eat. There was nothing to drink but salt water. And there was these gigantic Timangilla fish that can swallow whales at one bite that were gazing upon him in great anger and threatening to, to destroy him. Oh, how he was suffering. Millennium after millennium passed. Millions of years passed. And then he saw something that struck his heart. There was an island. And on that island was a big canyon tree. It's the first piece of land he saw in millenniums sitting on one of the branches of that banyan tree was a beautiful little boy, a baby, whose complexion was like the Indra Nila gem, was a, 
resplendent bluish hue. He had lotus-like eyes. And very playfully, with both of his hands, he lifted up his foot and put his toe within his mouth and sucked on it. Just by seeing the beauty of this child, all Mark and Dea Rishi's sufferings ceased to exist. He was in transcendental bliss. Now, this is amazing. It was the same cold, the same waves, the same Tim and Hilla fish jumping at him. But just by seeing the beautiful personality of Godhead, he was above and beyond all his days. He was in transcendental happiness. You see, Krishna consciousness is not about no reasons to suffer. This material world is a place of misery. A devotee does not pray to Krishna, please stop the suffering. The sufferings are going to happen, whether you're a devotee or not. But when we taste Parandrasvani Vartate, when we taste the sweetness of Krishna, then the sufferings of material existence become insignificant in comparison to the happiness that Krishna showers upon us from without and within. Just as Markandeya Rishi was gazing upon the beautiful form of Lord Krishna, the little boy looked at him and smiled. Suddenly the boy just inhaled and Markandeya Rishi found himself forcibly pulled out of the water and right into his mouth. From his mouth he went down toward his belly. Markandeya Rishi saw in the body of the Lord from inside all the 14 planetary systems. He saw the Himalayan mountains, the oceans, the planets, the demigods, all living beings. It was amazing. Then suddenly the Lord just blew out and Mark and she flew back into the ocean of dissolution. And Markandeya Rishi prayed to the Lord. All he wanted was undiv undivided devotional service. The Lord explained that this particular land is Purushottam Kshetra. This is my abode. In the entire lifetime of Brahma, When there are a hundred dissolutions, this abode always remains as it is. You can make your residence here. Mark and Rishi lived here in Puri, and soon the day of Brahma came. The water subsided, but he did not go anywhere. He was absorbed in remembering that beautiful form of the Lord. Lord Shiva was so interested in this extraordinary personality who has performed tapasyas like nobody has ever seen. He came here along with Uma, his beloved consort, and wanted to give darshan to Markandeya Rishi. He said, Markandeya Rishi, I have come. But Markandeya Rishi was so deeply immersed in internal consciousness of thinking about that beautiful form of baby Krishna, he could not, he could not take note of anything of this external world. But Lord Shiva wanted to give him a benediction. So what Lord Shiva did is he entered into the air and manifested himself within Markandeya Rishi's heart. Markandeya Rishi there saw Lord Shiva standing in his heart with a beautiful dark complexion, three eyes, ten arms, holding his drum, 
with various weapons, a skull, and he was smiling in great happiness. Markandeya Rishi was so astounded by this sight that he opened his eyes and saw Lord Shiva standing in front of him. Lord Shiva offered him any benediction. So pleased I am by your amazing enthusiasm and patience under all circumstances to remain faithful to the Lord. Markandeya Rishi did not want mystic powers. He definitely did not want a longer life. <clears throat> he only asked for one thing. Grant me unfailing, unflinching devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and to all of his devotees, especially you, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva granted him that benediction and then left that place chanting the glories of Markandeya Rishi to his wife, Parvati. Markandeya Rishi established a deity of Lord Shiva which is still here today. It is called Markandeshwara. And the place where he did his worship is not far from here at Markandeya Sarovar. Now when Yamaraj heard this story, he also established a deity of Lord Shiva called Yameshwar Mahadev and remains there worshiping Lord Shiva in honor of his great love and devotion to Lord Krishna. Lakshmi Devi continued extolling the glories of Purushottam Kshetra. She said to Yamaraj, you have no position here. Whatever a person does in Puri Dham is under the authority of Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna. None of the demigods have any influence here. And then she told Lord Brahma that in the future there will be a great king. His name will be Indrajumana Maharaj. Myself and Nila Madhava will disappear from this world. And this great devotee king, I want you to help him to establish my deity here and build a beautiful temple. Now the sages inquired for Jamini Rishi, can you explain something about this Indrajumana Maharaj? And he told, that Indrajumana Maharaj was a pure devotee of the Lord. He ruled the entire earth planet from his capital, Avanti. Avanti is to, I believe, in Madhya Pradesh, close to Ujjain. One time, Indrajumana Maharaj was in the assembly of saintly persons. And one very elderly sadhu was present. To Jumana Maharaj was expressing his heart. I have so much power, so much wealth, so much popularity, but it does not satisfy my heart. I want to see the Lord. If I do not see the Lord, everything in my life is useless. It has no, no value. The human form of life is specifically and especially meant for self-realization. The perfection of self-realization is to know God and to love God. Is there a place, is there a way 
that I can see the Lord in my life. This elderly sadhu stood up and spoke. When I was a child, I was wandering the world and brought to a place called Purushottam Chit. What a holy place that is. There is a deity of Nila Madhava. I stayed in that place. Under this banyan tree where Nila Madhava resides is Rohini Kund. And even an insignificant crow attained liberation just by touching that water and having the darshan of Nila Madhava. There is no place like that. My dear king, I do not want any benediction from you. I don't want wealth. I don't want long life. I don't want powers. I only want one thing. That you should attain your devotional service to the Lord. If you go there, all of your heart's desires will be fulfilled. In Jujumana Maharaj, he had such enthusiasm. Nothing else mattered in his life. He asked his Can you help me find this Nila Madhava? I was told it is in a place called Nilachala. The chief minister had a brother of the name Vidyapati who took it as his mission in life to serve the king by finding Nila Madhava. He searched and searched and ultimately came to Purushottam Chetra. Here, he came to Nilachala through very dense, thick forests. When he was lost, he heard the speaking of a class of men living in the forest called Shabaras. He was welcomed very cordially by them. The chief of the Shabaras greeted him with great affection. His name was Vishwavasu. Now, according to Skanda Purana, Vishvavasu was very eager to show Vidyapati the beautiful form of Nila Madhava. According to other story, it goes like this, that Vishvavasu was very, very reluctant that anyone see the deity because he always feared that the deity would someday leave him. In fact, it was known through legend that someday a king would come and Nila Madhava would leave the service of the Shabaras. Now here Vidyapati is a servant of the king.